Pop quiz! How do you prepare your ship for a stability test? Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. The stability test is a scientific experiment designed to achieve accuracy by controlling everything on the vessel during the test. Unfortunately, a working vessel is a terrible place for a scientific experiment. That level of control requires extensive preparation and coordination between the vessel owner and the test coordinator. Today I'm going to give you a practical guide to help you prepare for your next stability test. First, let's introduce the test coordinator. They act as your single point of contact and advisor throughout the test. This will be the naval architect firm that you hired. They coordinate times and resources and dates for all the various parties involved. The good part here is you get to decide on your limits and the test coordinator handles everything else. Now what do I mean about coordinating various resources? Well, let's take the example of hiring a harbor tug for the test. As the vessel owner, you might very well be in a better position to get a better deal on the tug, knowing the local market and the local rates. Okay, vessel owner, you will be responsible for hiring the harbor tug, and then the test coordinator is going to be responsible for handling everything else. That's a great division of labor, gives you the opportunity to get the best deals on the parts you know, and then that has the test coordinator take up all the other coordination parts, making your job easier with less that you have to deal with. And that's really going to set the tone for everything. Given all the steps necessary to execute a stability test, the test coordinator is going to become a welcomed ally. Now I say that, but halfway through, it may feel like they transform from ally into an enemy, imposing dozens of requirements on you. But if I can use an analogy, the test coordinator is much like an accountant at a tax audit. The test coordinator is there to guide you through the process and guard you against mistakes with government regulations. That's why the test coordinator has so many requirements. To ensure that the Coast Guard will easily accept the stability test on the first pass. So what is the timeline for a stability test? How soon do you need to start planning? Well, the timeline shown on your screen is a conservative estimate. That being said, if really necessary, you could compress this all down to about three weeks is the minimum. You know, if you hired somebody right today, three weeks out, you could have a test. That, I would say, is the minimum. But for now, let's stay with ideal. Two months out from when you want to actually have your test, you're going to contract with a naval architecture firm to conduct the test. Now, they're going to need that lead time to prepare. Starting one month out, the naval architecture firm has to submit that test procedure to the U.S. Coast Guard. Officially, USCG requires one month for any review but they can normally review procedures in one to two weeks. Three weeks out, you need to confirm that you're on schedule to complete all your vessel modifications by the planned test date. We can always push the test date back to accommodate you, that's fine. And then we're also looking at securing contracts for renting all the test equipment. Okay, we are one week out. Now things are starting to get exciting. Ideally, you'll meet with the coordinator on the vessel, have them do a pre-game survey of the vessel, and provide any guidance on vessel readiness. Um, this is also the time to offload any dead weight that needs to be removed for the stability test. Crunch time, two days before the incline experiment. At this point, the test coordinator is on site with their staff doing the dead weight survey. T minus one day before the incline experiment. Depending on the size of your vessel, that dead weight survey may require more than one day. And now we are at test day, day of the incline experiment. Number one rule, absolutely no construction work on the vessel. Non-essential crew should be off of the vessel at this point. We're trying to keep everything to minimums. The vessel is going to be shut down to critical systems only. And I warn people that anybody present during the test should prepare for a very long work day. This is most likely going into overtime. We're now one week after the incline experiment. Typically, USCG will allow the vessel to depart port under temporary authorization. That's something you can work with your coordinator and USCG to get that authorization. So all of this talk about things that you do with the test coordinator 
makes you wonder where can you find a test coordinator? Well, you can hire DMS. We provide the full range of stability test services. Everything from lightweight survey, deadweight survey, incline experiment, all the way up to full stability test. And we offer something that most others cannot achieve. We provide preliminary results on the day of the test. So after the test is done, the very next nail biting question that everybody wants to know, did we pass or not? At DMS, we're going to give you preliminary answers right there on the day of the test with a formal QA report to follow a few days later. So if you want an easy test and if you want results fast, check out our website and give us a call to find out how we can make your next project easy. One of the big things that I always tell people to watch out for is the tank configuration. The stability test procedure is going to list a tank configuration. This should be carefully reviewed and confirmed that it's acceptable for the vessel before submittal to USCG. We're very happy to change things and work with what's convenient for you. But once we submit it to the Coast Guard, Coast Guard generally wants us to stick to that plan. Any tanks that are listed as empty have to be truly empty. This means stripped and certified gas free. Here's the next big thing that I warn people about. Vessel dead weight. It cannot exceed 2% of light ship weight. And this is very critical. Stability tests have been in danger of rejection because their dead weight exceeded 2%. So what exactly is dead weight? Roughly speaking, dead weight is anything not bolted down or necessary for fire protection and life saving. The details are quite a bit more complicated and that's where you talk with your test coordinator. The best idea is to remove these items from the ship and temporarily store them in some form of secure facility off the ship. The following plans are required documentation and they're critical for the stability test. And this is not just me talking as the engineer, the Coast Guard will require it as well. One way or another, we need to find the information. We're looking at a lines plan or a hydrostatics computer model or sufficient information to create that model. General arrangement drawing is very necessary. Now, that's just what we need as the minimum. Generally, if you give us extra information, we'll be happy to have it. An inboard profile, a midship section drawing, and a draft mark drawing. Those are also very useful to have. Next, let's talk about the distribution of the equipment supply. You're going to see this under the heading of owner supplied equipment in the procedure. What that really means is the naval architect doesn't own these assets. Most of the equipment is going to be rented. This is an excellent opportunity to work with your test coordinator. You don't have to do this all alone. They can arrange the rented equipment, review the options, and then handle all the coordination for you. So the table on your screen shows a distribution of equipment of owner supplied versus supplied by the test coordinator. You can see you've got a little bit on the test coordinator side that's specialized measurement equipment. Then we also have a little bit on the owner side, fenders, mooring lines, harbor tug. And I recommend you keep to this because you're probably going to know how to get a better deal than we will. That leaves a lot though in the middle that's sort of a mixed supply. Either one of us would be able to handle sourcing a supply for these. And so that's something you can negotiate with your test coordinator to see what you're comfortable letting them handle for you. Talking about owner supplies, one of the other things we will need is owner supplied personnel. These are typically the vessel crew, actually, people that we will need present during the stability test. The master, chief engineer, any line handlers, and then if you're using the ship's crane, we're looking at a crane operator and a crane ground crew. So let's summarize up the key points. Preparing for your stability test, biggest thing I could say, plan ahead. This is not a spur of the moment decision. Your vessel tanks, when we say an empty tank, we mean absolutely no pools of liquid in that tank. Dead weight, beware the 2% limit. Then we come down to distribution of equipment and owner supplied personnel. This is something you want to negotiate with your test coordinator. Just work out who's going to be there, who won't be there, what you want to supply, what you don't want to supply. Remember, this is not a game where you have to conform to what the test coordinator is saying. Flip it around. We work for you. Our job is to make your life easier. Tell us what will work best for you. We're going to then tell you the requirements. 
and we'll find a way happy medium in the middle to make sure that we can get things as smooth and painless as possible. And that's really the key to it, is that communication between the owner, the crew, and the test coordinator. That's what you need to make sure that things go well. Remember that the test coordinator is there to help you. They want to make sure that you have a successful test. And that means not only passing, but also doing so with a minimum amount of pain. Any issues can easily be overcome with sufficient planning and preparation. Our job is to make your job easier. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. You know, it's not magic, it's science. And DMS is here to bring some science to your next ship project. Whether that's stability analysis, ship structures, or stability tests, check out the website to find out how I can make your next project easy. Thanks very much.